Hey guys, it's Becky. Long time no see. Sorry about that. But today I am doing my August wrap up. Compared to last month, I didn't read a whole lot this month, but then again, I read like 14 books in July, I think, and I read six books this month, so it still wasn't too shabby. For the first two weeks of August, I was in a complete reading slump. The two books I was in the middle of, I was not interested in finishing at all at the time, so I pretty much did not read for the first two weeks of August, and the book that finally got me out of that slump was for a Divergent Collection by Veronica Roth. As I'm sure most of you know, this is a bind up of four novellas told in four's perspective from the Divergent world, and I really, really enjoyed it. Three of the four novellas are told before he meets Triss, and the last one is told during about the middle parts of Divergent, and I really enjoyed being able to see Four's initial reaction to Triss. I like getting a lot more background about himself and his family, and I gave this one five out of five stars. It was a great wrap up to the Divergent world. The second book I read in August was The Road by Cormac McCarthy. This is an apocalyptic novel and it is set entirely around a father and son. They're pretty much the only characters throughout the majority of this book. And to be honest, I was not a really big fan of this book. For one, this book actually scared me quite a bit because I was terrified the whole time that it would be about zombies, which I do not do well with at all. I am not a zombie person. And then as well as there is such a lack of hope in this book and I didn't like that feeling of complete despair. I appreciate the relationship and the bond between the father and the son in this book, but overall I didn't get this like lasting impression from the book. I didn't learn anything significant, so I only gave this one two stars. After that, I got into a pretty big contemporary kick, which is kind of funny for me because most of the things I've been reading lately are fantasy-esque type books, but all that appealed to me this month was pretty much contemporary. So next, I read Amy and Roger's Epic Detour by Morgan Matson, and I loved this book. I did like it more than Since You've Been Gone by her, which is the only other Morgan Matson book that I have read at this time, but I really want to read Second Chance Summer now. Uh, this book follows a girl named Amy. Amy's father just died a few months ago, so her mother decides that she wants to pack up and leave California and move out east, and Amy is responsible for taking the car across country. The problem is her father died in a car wreck, and she is not comfortable behind the wheel, so her mother enlists the help of a former childhood friend named Roger, and they embark on this journey together, and it was so precious. I did have a couple problems with it, but for the most part, it was absolutely beautiful. As many other people have said, I really enjoy how Morgan Matson includes things such as playlists, postcards, drawings, and other pictures in her works. It adds to the story. So yeah, I gave this one five stars, I think. Either four or five stars, but I think five. After that, I broke down and bought and read Isla and the Happily Ever After by Stephanie Perkins. I told myself that I was going to wait to actually purchase a hard copy of this until it came out in paperback, but I could not resist when I saw it. I had to get it right then, and I read it within 24 hours, so it was definitely worth it. This one is definitely my favorite of the three. I could just reread this over and over and over again right now. It was precious. I know some people have said that they didn't think it was as realistic as the first two, but in my experiences, this one is definitely the most realistic for me. She's a senior in high school, and yeah, she's a bit immature, but she's like 17, 18, like everyone's kind of immature when you're a senior in high school, and I adored Isla, I adored Josh. I just, ah, I, words. Anyway, long story short, I loved every single bit of this book, and obviously five out of five stars and it is definitely one of my favorites of 2014. That was so beautiful. Alrighty, after that I read Winger by Andrew Smith. I have heard so many great great things about this book and about Andrew Smith, but to be entirely honest I was not a big fan of this book. 
If you don't know, this follows a 14-year-old boy named Ryan Dean West who is attending a boarding school, and he is a junior in high school, so everyone else is like two to three years older than him in his class. That being said, I'm aware that with him only being 14, Ryan Dean is going to be a lot less mature than the other people in his class, but I hated him. He was one of the most selfish characters I've ever read about. He was his internal thoughts were so immature and he was a complete brat. The only thing that really revived the story for me was the last 30 pages or so, part four, which Ryan Dean grows a lot in this last section because of events that happened right previous to that. The writing got significantly better within this last section and he got significantly more mature. So that helped the story, and in a way I understand why it was written the way it was, and I can appreciate it, but I still didn't particularly like it. So anyway, I would give this one probably like a 2.5 out of 5, just for the ending pretty much. The last book I completed in the month of August was Where Things Come Back by John Corey Whaley. Again, I heard great, fantastic things about this book previous to reading it, as well as just John Corey Whaley in general, and I did really enjoy this one. I thought it did have a pretty slow buildup. I was kind of confused as well as to why it kept switching perspectives from Colin to originally Benton Sage, um, because they seemed like they weren't related in any way, but by the end, everything comes together, and I really enjoyed the way it was written. I didn't enjoy it as much as I know a lot of people had, but it was still really good, and I think on Goodreads I gave it like a 3.5, 4 stars. And finally, I am still trekking through A Clash of Kings by George R. R. Martin. I read about 180 pages of this book this month just because I wasn't really feeling in the fantasy mood. Hopefully I can finish it in the month of September seeing as I only have like 250 pages left and I have a swarm of swords sitting on my shelf waiting for me. So hopefully I can get through this pretty soon. I am enjoying it but again I just really wasn't in the fantasy mood this past month but I think I'm getting there again so Hopefully I can knock this one out here soon. As for a TBR, I'm not going to make one in the month of September. I just started classes again, so I'm not too sure how my schedule's gonna go. I don't wanna put a lot of pressure on myself to read a specified amount of books this month because my schedule has gotten significantly more busy and I don't know what it's going to be like, so I'm just going to read when I feel like it so I can still enjoy it. And there you have it. This is my short and sweet August wrap-up. I keep feeling like I haven't read that much this month, but I did still read six books, and a couple of them were pretty decent size, so I'm happy. All right, guys, hopefully I'll be able to get another video up soon. I'm going to try to be a little bit more consistent, but I'm still getting used to this new schedule, so a new video will be up when it's up. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye. All right, the the second book I read this month, no, it's not this month anymore. It's September now. I swear, every time I film, sirens go off. Every time.